from everyone. Can you hold on? I'm okay. Fine. Good evening, everyone. Okay. Fine. Good evening, everyone. I believe that uh, this will be very helpful to um, those of us in a first year in architecture so that uh, we will be able to uh, meet up with our assignments. I know a lot of us think that we didn't do TB in um, secondary school, so probably will hinder us. You don't need to have done TB in secondary school. I also didn't do TB in secondary school. Uh, but I was able to, to meet up with um, friends. And usually you would have ACU 105 and ACU 106 as open graphics and rendering. And uh, I, I know for your set, you probably didn't do drawings as an exam. We did drawings as an exam and we expected you to read all your drawings and just do our thing. So let's get to work um, to see how far we can go with this assignment. Okay, so this is a neat sheet. I advise you get a chipboard to line your table so that the pressure you are making on the paper will not uh, will not scar your your um, the pressure being mounted on the paper will not scar the paper from under you. That's what I meant. All right. Uh, so um, of course you need to know how to set up your paper uh, and um, it's expected that when you begin to set up your paper you place your t-square uh, horizontally this way keying to the edge of the table and you make sure that the line underneath your paper is the same throughout you see that this one is falling out so i have to uh, amend the line the paper until I have equidistance throughout. Uh, it looks like equidistance. So I'm going to be taping, I'm going to be taping uh, the four corners of the paper uh, right now. Okay. So let's move up. Please permit me to my phone. I haven't gotten my tripod. <laughs> Someone borrowed it, so I, I'm just trying to improvise before it gets dark. Okay, I hope you can see that. Already set the paper and line with the T square. So now I'm going to take in, you just need a very small piece to tape the edge down. So slightly tape the edge down. Small piece, tape the edge down. Having done that, um, you don't start drawing that. You need a sheet of paper to sketch your plan. Okay, so the base is a two bedroom house. Two bedroom house. Okay. Okay, so it's a two bedroom house. That's the brick. And um, you need, in the two bedroom house, of course, you need two rooms. So two bedrooms, rather, two bedrooms. You also need um, a toilet okay, or a visitor's toilet. A visitor's toilet. This is called brief analysis. That is, you just break down what are the things that you can, you should have in a two bedroom house. So you're going to just break it down and try to um, envisage how to go around it. So you need a visitor's toilet. You need, um, you can make these two rooms and suite. And suite means each room has its own toilet. 
right? Uh, toilets and bathrooms, if, if that's what you may call it. So a visitor's toilet, um, a living room, okay, um, a dining, a dining room or a dining area, anything you call it. You need a kitchen. You need a kitchen. What else do you need? Um, you will need a balcony or a terrace. Uh, terrace, balcony. Then what else do you need? Um, I guess let me just put an MG here. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Let's see what we can make out. So the next thing to do is to make a sketch. Make a sketch of what you want to, to draw. So let's say uh, the concept of the shape I want to use is a square. And I want to cut a part of this square here. And this is what I want to use as the concept of my floor plan. So uh, eventually, my floor plan is supposed to look like this. Okay, so let's assume this is what this is what I want to do as the concept of my floor plan. So let me call this floor plan concept. Right now, your floor plan concept can be it can even be a square. You know just a square, it can be a rectangle, it can be, but whatever it is you want to do, make sure that you ensure that you achieve it from the start. Okay, so let me put all of these um, outlines now into my floor plan. Now, number one rule in creating a floor plan, an effective floor plan, number one rule is that all the rooms must be, you know, this is the concept I want to create, right? This is the concept I want to create. And you draw north, this is south, this is west, and this is east. Now, your entrance should always be in the south because that is the place um, facing you. You don't put your entrance here. If you put your entrance here, it means you are saying that your north is this place. So the person who is viewing the plan will have to turn the paper to view from that place. So wherever you put the entrance is the south. Okay, then secondly, um, all bedrooms must be in the north axis and they will make use and you will put two windows, one in the east, one in the north, one in the north, one in the west to maximize sunset and sunrise. Okay, so that's important. So if your plan doesn't have that, please try correcting that. Maybe that's how to make it. Those are the laws in creating a floor plan. Okay, then um, take note of this word. I don't know how soon you will see it. <laughs> but we saw it as early as um, 100 years ago, first semester, when we had our economic um, exam, when we were asked to produce a floor plan. And they said, add fenestration. What is fenestration? Fenestration simply means openings. And openings that you have in your plan view are windows, doors, and maybe arcs. arcs. Those are the openings that you have when drawing a floor plan. So when you see fenestration, this is what it's being referred to. Your design, um, your um, lecturer or coordinator uses that word often. He likes the word fenestration. You know, just to confuse students on the spot so that they don't know what to do and all of that stuff. But you know, once you know what it means, you're good to go. Okay. Um, so next, let's put all these details now into the plan that we want to sketch. So the sketch, you must get your sketch. Get a final sketch before you start drawing. Don't start drawing without a sketch. Um, that is what is important for you to know. Okay, so, right, I want to, remember I said this is the shape I want my floor plan to, to have. Okay, so now let's look at this. I want to put my bedroom here. So now make sure that when you are drawing plans, 
you use symmetrical lines if possible draw a grid i think you must have been taught um uh, modular modular coordination and all what modular coordination does is that it helps you to be able to put your walls you know in line that they are not scattered you have different walls connecting and they are not joining each other so that's the concept of modular coordination and usually modular coordination is placed at three meters or at five meters reason is because when you give your plan to your structural engineer your structural engineer the the amount of span or the span between two cool two columns is minimum of uh, three meters maximum of 4.5 or five meters so that is why they use three meters and five meters so that you know okay after three meters this is the wall so you will not be using your skill all the time to measure five meters three meters five meters three meters okay so uh, that is that so let's see here okay so i want to put the two rooms here to be at the same side of the the, the plan so let's assume that this is three meters okay and uh, to have a small bedroom to have a small bedroom uh, three meters is okay but i want to i want to have a good you know space so for bedrooms when you are drawing plans for bedrooms, uh, the minimum requirement for room is three meters minimum, right? Minimum measurement is three meters for a room. Don't use 2.7, don't use uh, 2.6, that's, that's Lagos room. Don't use any of that, Two point, that's three meters. But a standard room should be 3.6 meters by, let's say 3.6. So I'll use 3.6 by 3.6 for my rooms. Then for the master bedroom, let's say I want to have a master bedroom, I can say 4.2 by maybe 4.8 or even 3.6 or five meters, all right? So I'm going to keep this at 3.6 meters, okay? I'm keeping this at 3.6 meters. So I'm going to extend the line a little bit beyond um, the modular coordination sketch. That I've made. So this sketch now, this is a wall, right? This is a wall, and this is the second room here. This is the second room. Okay, so I'm making this second room my master's bedroom, and I want it to be 4.2 by 4.8. So if it's 4.2, it means you know I'm getting an interesting shape now, right? It means that this wall will extend a little bit to the back, okay, to accommodate that extra because I want all of them. I want Two of them to have the same extent. Okay. By the way, guys, please get Nataraj eraser. Don't use normal those 10 10 error, the 20 20 error eraser. Those ones or the E20. E20 usually um, it usually bleeds on paper, and after you clean it, it will not show. As an architect, get Nataraj. Nataraj is a very good product. I recommend it for cleaning. Your work it, it leaves no dust and it's very strong eraser so i want all of them to stop at this point okay so this is bedroom one okay this is bedroom one let me just label as b1 because i'm sketching then this is b2 or master's bedroom so in bedroom one i want a window here right okay i'm also going to show you the right way to um, represent windows and plan uh, because I've, I've seen some people's work and they, it seems they don't know how to represent windows and doors okay so here i'm going to create a um, little bit of space and i'm going to put my door here now this line is not a triangle it is the line of the door swing it's showing you how the door swings this is door swing it's an arc you know when you open your door on the floor, if your door is very close to the floor, you see some lines forming an arc. So that, that line, this is it. It's called the door swing. Then entrance into bedroom two. I'm going to put a door swing. And um, of course, I'm going to put a window here for cross ventilation. Put a window here. Okay. So minimum measurement for windows in a living room for windows. Okay windows is 1.2 meters 
by 1.5. That is the minimum. Okay, 1.2 meters width. This width will be 1.2. Then in the elevation, your height can be 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to use. I want to use 1.2 by 1.5. Okay, since I want to use 1.2 by, I can put two windows. In the, two window opening in the plate. Okay, right then. Having done that, um, I'm going to pick a wall here. Okay, I'm still going to leave this here, this wall. So I'm just trying to make an interesting floor plan shape. Okay, so that's bedroom and bedroom two. Now, let me put living room because that is the next largest thing. Remember, this is where I want to put my entrance. I can change this entrance and probably shift it to the middle. Let me shift it to the middle so that I'll complete this one. Let me put an entrance. Yeah, let me put my entrance at the center. Okay. So uh, this is my modular coordination line. You will see that this line, this wall here, and this wall here are on the same line. You are making the job easier and more professional as an architect if your plans, you know, you have more more walls following the same line. Okay. So let's make this my entrance. Okay, and let me protrude my entrance a little bit and put columns here. A column will be 450 by 450. So if you have, uh, if you have a uh, a template a guide, this is 600. So you have to look for the 450 hole, or probably draw it with your T square and set square. So this is my entrance. I'm going to put staircase because I plan to step up, you know, into the Building. So this is my entrance. Okay, entrance porch. Right. So with that, um, I want to enter from here, you know, into let me put my I want to enter from here into I put the door here. Let me put my entrance door here. Okay, and the door swing. I want to put my entrance door here. Then from the entrance, I would I don't want to enter directly into the sitting room. It's not very professional like that to enter just you don't just enter boom and you are entering into the sitting room. There is something called an ante room. So I'm going to put an ante room. If you have been to some of these new contemporary houses, you will see what is called an ante room. An ante room is usually a small room you enter. Visitors you don't want the, you don't want to enter the major room. You put them ante room and you ask them to sit down there you know and so an ante room is just a small room preceding the living room so you put i'm going to put an ante room and i want my ante room minimum um, um length and length of an ante room should just be 2.5 so i'm going to put an ante room here okay put an ante room here right ante room This and you can you can as well add the visitors toilet here in the ante room. So let me sorry about that. Let me let me make my entrance elaborate. Okay, and then I'm going to put the toilet here. The toilet here. Which will be for the visitors. Ante room. Ante toilet. Right. So this is my visitors' toilet here. This is ante room, and the wall of ante room starts here. Okay. Let me make it in line with modular coordination. Remember that my modular coordination is three. Um, Three, three point. Okay, let me make this three meters. I'll make it three meters. Okay, so it means that this toilet can be one point two. Right now, let me go to that minimum measurement for toilet is one point two by one point two. That's very small toilet. Kunkolo, the one that only one person can enter, is one point two by one point two. But normally, if you want to make a toilet, you should make it one point two by one point five. All right, so that. And then the door of the toilet is always 750 mm. 
wideness. You know the wideness of um, the, the, uh, an interior door is 900 mm. Interior door should be interior doors. Normal door in the house is 900 mm, right? So, but the door of a toilet is, is usually 70, 750 mm because of um, that length. So I'm going to put a window here to you know, ventilate the ante room. You can also put another window. Let me push this out to create an interesting shape. Push this out to create an interesting shape and put a window here. So you can put in a chair or whatever you want. So ante room. Now from the ante room, then you can now enter into the living room. So I'm going to wall this and probably put staircase here. And we'll step down. You know, after stepping up, I'm going to step down here in the house. So this area now is the living room that I'm creating. Okay. So let me, since I have you know, a recess here, I'm going to create the same recess here in the living room. You know, just to make the house look nice. Here, here. Okay. So here we are. This recess window here, and maybe window here, maybe window here. Okay, so this is the living room space, and I'm going to cut. This is uh, for living room. The minimum measurement for living room should be 4.2 minimum, minimum. But standardly, you can just put 4.5 by let's say 4.8 meters, or even five meters as a living room. So. Um, I'm assuming that this is three meters, so I'm going to add two meters to it, and I'm going to cut it somewhere here in the middle. Okay. So this is living room. Okay, so this is living room. Here, yeah. and of course, window here, window here. So I have cross ventilation in my living room. So can you see that in all the rooms, there is even in the ante room, there is a cross ventilation. There is window here, there is window here. There must be window as two sides. You know, there are some, there are some circumstances that you can't avoid, you know, having windows on only one side. But try as much as possible to create a cross ventilation in all the rooms. So now you can see that light is entering from here, light is entering from here. So this place is well lit. This place is well lit, right? So from here, um, which other room do I have? I've done visitor's toilet. I need kitchen and dining. Now, in all the houses you have visited, just scroll in your mind. Kitchen and dining are always together. And um, apart from the fact that they're always together, the dining is always, you know, you can always see dining from, from the sitting room, right? So uh, that's what I want to create. So I can put my dining here, but I don't want to put my kitchen and dining in a place where uh, they are not connected or I can't you know, put. Now, somebody might be saying, oh, just put it here. If I put dining here, okay, that means, okay, I think I, I can, I can, uh, I can. But if I put dining here, if I put dining here, you know, kitchen will be beside <laughs> the bedroom. Okay, so I'm trying to see how I can um, abscond from putting kitchen inside dining. So let me make this the balcony. Oh, oh, look at the balcony. Any balcony back here? This one here. So, anyways, I'll just put this here, right? So, uh, I'm putting this there, and um, I'm going to put I'm going to put my kitchen here. I'm going to put my kitchen here, and I'm going to make this point the dining. However, if I put the dining here, I need lights to enter into my dining, so it's not possible to put the dining here. So let me look for somewhere. So you see, drawing plan takes a lot of thinking process. This is probably the only place I can put it. This is this place is close to an external wall. Okay. So let me put. So I have a six. You know, each modulation is each uh, modular coordination is three meter, three meter. Now the minimum space for dining is three meters. You will see this set. This set on your furniture template the space that can take it minimum is 2.7 so 
the 300 mm remote added to me that's three meters that is what can take a table for six years so dining most standard dining is three meters so three meters here for dining we put a wall here we call this dining area okay and put a wall here so window can be here window can be here and call this kitchen now i i can't attend i can't afford to block i can't afford to block you know this entrance either i block it or i shift i shift uh, let me shift this entrance the door close to the wall so that i can pull another wall here and this becomes my kitchen now if you if you check very well you will notice that the kitchen should have two entrances you have two entrances one maybe from the living room and the other from the dining of course the kitchen must always have an entrance from the dining so that you want to bring the food directly from kitchen to dining so i'm putting kitchen here right so now you see i have a very big space here with nothing inside of it so now i have to think of something else that i want to put you know in this space if i don't have anything else i can just you know um I can just reposition this room to this side and delete any other thing we left on that side. So usually you start with a lot of space and then you have to keep removing some things. So now, how do I represent an arc? Because an arc is an opening. You will represent an arc. This is the wall. I want I want this um, wall to be the extent of the dining. So I'm going to extend the wall of the kitchen to this point and I'm going to represent this with two dotted lines two broken lines one two three like this and you create another line beside it that's how you represent it is to show that there is something over this point that the plan cannot cover because when you say plan let's say you have a house hmm, and you have a window you have windows in the house this plan that we are drawing this plan that you are drawing is what you can see if you cut this house in the middle like this with scissors you cut it if it's possible you cut the house and you remove this part what are you going to see if you look at it from the top that is what you know a plan so the plan is a view of the house you know from the window level so all these ones now uh, this is how to represent an arc okay so i have an arc here too it means i'll create the same you know, dotted lines above. So, living room um, done. What else do I have? Uh, balcony terrace. I think I've exhausted everything else I wanted to put. So, let me put laundry here. Now, if you look at this place, this place, if I put a room here, hmm, this place will be dark. There will be no source of light coming to this point. There will be no source of light coming to this center here. So it's either I uh, remove, sorry, it's either I remove, I remove this room and put it here, and then create lighting for this place, or or I have to um, you know redo my plan. But because I don't want to redo my plan, okay, I'm going to move this bedroom. I'm going to move this bedroom so that I can enter this bedroom. By coming here okay so put this here it's a master's bedroom anyway so um, if it has if it has a uh, what do you call if it has sorry for the interruption um, okay so I have I've shifted bedroom to this side right so I'm going to close up the bedroom space I have here Going to close it up. Close up the bedroom here. Right. So here I have I'm going to put I'm going to put I'm going to put This, this is now my new shape. Ah, and it was already looking like what I drew initially, right? Okay, so this is now my new shape. 
and I'm going to make this a balcony also or an exit. You know, that include chin, <laughs> backyard or kitchen. Yeah. So I'll put a door here. The door of the exit should always open outside and then put the door slide here. So that is the exit of the kitchen, right? And I have to put another room. But before I put the room, I need to light up this place. This place is very dark, as you can see. The light coming from this wall will not reach this part of the room. So um, what do I do? What do I do? How do I put it? Let me let me put a store here, right, in the kitchen. And I'll put the light of the store here. Now I'm going to... Um, Carve out another shape. Carve out another shape. Okay. Carve out another shape and put a window here. So this window will light up all this place. Okay. And look, it's coming together. It's coming together, coming together. Let me remove this balcony. I don't want balcony again. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So you see that drawing a plan bar is a lot of thinking before you actually get to you know drawing on paper. So I've done this now. Okay, and I'm going to put the door of this room here. So this is bedroom one. Now, um, because I say I want to put toilet in bedroom one and two, I'm going to put the toilet of this bedroom here and suite, and the toilet of this bedroom here and suite. So the opening of this toilet is here and the opening of this toilet is here. So look at Viola. This place is called a lobby. A lobby is simply for circulation, right? Circulation. Okay, so this is the plan I've come up with now for a two bedroom house, bedroom one, bedroom two here and bedroom one here. All right, so I'm going to stop this video now my battery is low and i get to charge then when i charge later in the evening i will show you how to transfer this into um scaled drawing as an equipment thank you guys for joining i hope this really helps your planning so please as an assignment for you now pick your own plan you know and compare with this do i have do i have dark areas now uh, for how do you know that an area is dark if it is up to five meters, it's already dark without light and from any center, it's already dark. Why? Because light can only travel six meters. So um, whatever, whatever, wherever you are going to create a room, make sure, don't just create rooms blindly, make sure that uh, there are no dark spaces. So recheck your plan, make sure that nothing is hanging, make sure that no space is looking like an afterthought. Let the shape be, you don't necessarily have to create a shape like this. You can. You can create, you know, a square. Your plan can be a square. It can be a simple shape. It can be a rectangle, right? So create the shape. Next, I'm going to show you how to do the scale drawing, but I can't do that now. My battery is very low, so I have to go and charge. Then later in the evening, I will create another live session where I show you how to draw um, using your scale rule and T square and getting it correctly. Then I will also show you how to draw your roof plan. You know, some of us have complex shapes like this. You have to have a complex roof plan also. So I will be showing you how to do a complex roof plan. <coughs> you don't have to, it's not always uh, 45 degree. You know, you use 45 degree in plan when you are doing the elevation. When you are doing the elevation, you have to use 35 degree. You know, so that is, those are the rules, guys. Then I'm going to show you if you have a ridge, where are you supposed to have a gutter? You know, some of us are having issues with our roof plan, but everything is going to be answered later this evening when I get to charge. Thank you guys for joining in this live stream session. God bless you. My name is Gaius. Um, I'm a 400 level student. Thanks, guys. Take care.